I love this song. There we go. Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from around the world. We are so glad that you tuned in this evening to the Exceptional Conservative Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, but it is the power of liberation, first to the Republican and then the Socialist. The lovely Mary Brockman is in my chat room. Good evening, Mary Brockman. I love you dearly. So glad to have you here. Mary Brockman is my balancer. If you diss her, you diss me, and you will be dismissed. Also want to give a shout out to Ralph J. Chittam Sr. What a wonderful program he had earlier this evening. You'll start finding him on the air on SHR Media at uh, 8.05 p.m. Eastern Time, right before us. Powerful show. Powerful way of starting the evening off. Uh, Lonnie Poindexter, I want to thank you so much for being here in the chat room as well. And, of course, Dan the Man Butcher from HP Pundit. Glad to have you here as well. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have a most serious issue regarding terrorism. Still unresolved, even after 16 years of war in Afghanistan. Manchester. Uh, during the concert of Ariana Grande, Grande or however way Granada, however way you say her name, so a young pop star who is pro-Muslim, pro-open borders, pro, pro, pro-liberal, one of the people who wears that little pink hat on their head. Yeah, yeah, that's Ariana. Yeah. Well, uh, unfortunately. Those things that we profess when we're young and naive aren't always the most brilliant. It's certainly the most, not the most satisfactory. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we have a crisis, and it's going to take the whole world coming together to drive out the pagan Philistines who have uh, caused hurt, harm, and danger to all of us. Um, we will have tonight with us uh, not only a wonderful uh, soldier, uh, but certainly uh, a war correspondent. Bob uh, Vorchak will be with us in just a few, and we will be talking about uh, the issues of terrorism and all the other concerns that we have at this particular point around the world. Uh, and, uh, and we'll be talking as well about Trump's travel to the Middle East. Right now, he's in Rome. Uh, we'll be meeting uh, probably around this time period, if not a little earlier, not a little later, forgive me, um, with the Pope as they discuss their differences. Uh, and hopefully they can come together, especially after what happened in Manchester last night. I uh, also want to let you all know that Janice Hall, the J. Hall World Report, will be coming up at 10, 10 p.m. We look forward to Janice breaking down the most sophisticated things in world commentary and news and bringing it to the kitchen table for all of us. Listen, you know how we start this particular program off without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, we take off our hats. Uh, wow, I still have hair. Uh, and uh, we put our right hand over our heart and we begin to pledge allegiance and we let the kids lead us in doing so. So let's go ahead and let those kids take off. Go right ahead, young people, lead us. All 
All right there. There we go. So let's get this party started. Let us get on the phone immediately and get in contact with none other. And I got to tell you all, before y'all really break away, uh, as some of you will, uh, tomorrow night we will have Alicia Poe uh, and Liz Crokin from WND World News Daily. They will be here and we will be breaking news on the Seth Rich murder. So just want to let y'all know, uh, we, we're following that story very closely. Uh, I take this stuff very seriously. Some people say too seriously. I take it very seriously. And we're going to find out exactly uh, what's happening uh, with the Seth Rich investigation. A lot of things are questionable at this point. Very, very questionable. Um, <clears throat> one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Getting in contact with Robert Borchick. Um He is the author of Drive On. How poignant uh, on this particular week. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Okay, we seem to be missing him at this particular juncture. We'll come back to uh, Bob a little bit later uh, on our program. Love you, Claudia. Glad to have you here. Claudia Cheek has entered the classroom. Well, let's get about, let's uh, go to some uh, news on this particular uh, night that I want to bring to your attention. Uh, unfortunately, in this particular case, we have. Uh, 19 dead, 59 have been wounded uh, at the Ariana Grande concert in Manchester, England. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the British Prime Minister has raised the national threat level to the highest that it can possibly be. In fact, they are expecting another attack, something more preeminent uh, than they've ever expected before. Where are they getting that information from? Well, it is coming from resources within not only the American government, but the U.S. government, but also uh, their own homeland. They have arrested two individuals, one of which uh, they will be announcing in the morning the name of that party. The other party, uh, well, actually the bomber killed 22, not 19, it's 22 now. Um, so, and that number, these numbers will probably alter as we go on as well. Uh, Salman Abedi is the bomber extraordinaire uh, who decided that it was good to find the 72 virgins that he's always wanted since he couldn't find them here in England or, or there in England uh, and decided that he was going to blow away uh, as many people as he could take with him uh, in a single bound. And yes, he did that. He did that exceedingly well. Now, the real uh, the real light that is being shown at this particular point uh, is on the eight-year-old girl who was killed at this particular uh, event. Uh, Safi, or Safi Wuzos, uh, is the eight-year-old girl uh, who has become the national symbol of the innocent yeah, thank you very much. They have become the national symbol of the innocent children who have suffered either by death or by punishment of force. Uh, apparently, uh, the beautiful little girl was, was uh, succumbed to her injuries as a result of the suicide attack. Uh, apparently, Grand had finished her set, walking off, and then boom goes the dynamite. Uh, Safi was the third victim, confirmed to have died in the attack. Uh, an 18-year-old girl and a 26-year-old girl died before her. Now, the head teacher at Safi's school, Chris Upton, uh, told the Guardian that uh, Safi was simply a beautiful little girl in every aspect of the word. She was loved by everyone. And so you have to get to a point. Uh, I, I had a wonderful conversation with the Bovade Exemplar last night, Sir Mark Bovade Exemplar, regarding this particular matter. And while I did not give all of my commentary because I love to have the contributors have their speak uh, more so than me. And I thank God for this opportunity to talk with you tonight. Uh, we have a crisis uh, around this particular world and the crisis is, um, I, I no longer want to tell you that it's political correctness. That, that would be very easy to tell you that it's pro political correctness. That the, the reason why people uh, don't want to deal with this particular subject matter, don't want to touch this particular subject matter, is simply because, uh, my gosh, I, I, I mean, really, I, I, you know, who wants to racially profile, although Mohammedism is not a race? Um, who, who wants to keep someone out of a country because of their religion, even though Mohammedism is not a religion, it's a cult? The truth of the matter as to why we are dealing with this issue is because totalitarians love each other. 
All this stuff about political correctness is just bunk at this point. Political correctness was in 2001 on September the 11th when it took a while for the Today Show hosts to realize that this was not an accident. Uh, this was intentional. Uh, and the Twin Towers eventually fell. And then you see George Bush standing with the firemen uh, speaking through a device uh, telling them that the world will hear from us very soon. Um, the fact of the matter is that there is no real difference between the KKK, Black Lives Matter, ISIS, the Marxists, the Socialists, and the Democrat Party. I will tell you that without a shadow of a doubt. From now on, you will not hear me talk about it being politically correct. It is politically expedient that you have ISIS at this point. All of those particular groups, and include the LGBTQ, RST, UV, w, X, y, Z community and all of that, it is politically expedient for those particular groups to talk through authoritarian purposes, try to convert you by force, coerce you by spirit, and literally try to crush you into the ground if you do not believe in what they believe. I am tired of listening to hosts that come on this network and other networks I've listened to all day long, and they use the phraseology of political correctness. It's not political correctness. It's political expediency. They are all working, maybe not necessarily meeting in the same hall, maybe not necessarily drinking from the same punch bowl, but they all have the same endeavor that is to destroy the republic. That is to destroy the American people. That is to destroy the peace that comes with conservatism, Christianity, capitalism, personal individualism, and sovereignty that comes along with that, and as well, constitutionalism. All of them are operating outside of the rule of law. And if we continue to say that it is a politically correct thing for them to do, then we agree with them. We will, When we come back, we're going to attempt to get Mr. Direct back uh, on the line. If not, I, I have a few things I want to say to you tonight. Uh, and I, I hope that you stay tuned. I really do. We'll be right back. <laughs> thinking from a left brain and doing the job the American maggots want. BZ is fundamentally changing America one diaper at a time. Just when safety pin manufacturers are running out of metal for the diapers of the leftists where the speech is free, but the drinks are not. The bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon can be heard every Tuesday and Thursday night, commencing at 11 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Pacific, where pushback is a requisite art form in and of itself. Let your ossicles be truly liberated when you listen to the bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon, only on SHR Media Network. No ferrets were harmed in the making of this ad. Hi, my name is Willie Lawson of the Willie Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We have a brand new show on at 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. We are bound to make you think we are bound to make you see things differently. We are bound to push you into action for not only your community, but your country. That's the Willie Lawson Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network, 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. See you there. From the war front to the streets of our nation's capital, men of faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show, 9.05 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. It's a new day on New Day, Black and Red. Welcome back. This song is called I'm Going With Him. 
it is a song I truly love, and I, you all just don't know. When this show goes off the air and I play this to go, I listen to it about four or five times. It is just a wonderful piece of music. I'm going with him. And I want you to know something about my life. No matter what people say about me, no matter what people do to me, I'm going with him. All the way. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, talking about the Manchester incident, I know Baby Z will certainly be happy I played that one, boy, I tell you. I got the wrong one last night, Mary. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, I am so sorry. But tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern time, you all should stay tuned for SHR Media, uh, shrmedia.com. Uh, and I recommend highly that you go. In fact, let me just go ahead and put that in there I, where I want you all to go. Uh, shrmedia.com for Berserk Bobcat Saloon. Uh, that's tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and I want you to go into their chat roll. Make sure that you get in there. Get in there early. In fact, click on shrmedia.com now uh, so that it's up and ready to rock and roll when you're when this show is over. Um, I, I firmly believe in supporting and promoting everybody that I possibly can in this particular process. And I want you all definitely uh, to listen to uh, BZ. BZ is one of the most incredible, simply most incredible individuals on radio today. Just a tremendous orator uh, and a great diviner of message based on fact, not fiction. So I would earnestly tell you, tune in and listen to him accordingly. Um, I want to tell you that right now they are updating the terror alert in Britain. They have found a, uh, another victim, uh, in this particular process. Uh, and as we're watching the, the decay of this, you might find in terms of the coverage of this particular story. Now, if you're watching or, or reading uh, HP Pundit, if you go to the news center that we have here on the Exceptional Conservative Show dot com uh, on the Exceptional Conservative Network, you go there, you can read uh, Dan the Man Butcher stuff. I know that he's covering this stuff, but there are certain networks that are so caught up on the premise of collusion. electoral collusion that that sense that there is blood in the water and that with all due ferocity there is a point that there is an opportunity here to do something to Donald Trump that Hillary Clinton couldn't do to him that the other 17 people that ran against him in the Republican Party couldn't do to him that Billy Bush couldn't do to him. There's blood in the water here in Washington, D.C. because there is the concern that a constitutional crisis is ebbing and flowing. That literally, that Donald Trump working with the Russian intelligence. That this is this is how it's being presented. If you're if you're watching uh, those sappy little news stations, uh, CNN as well as MSNBC and all the others, they're saying that while we have no proof, while we only have the journalistic whisperers from the Washington Post telling us this. While there is absolutely nothing to this story, more no nothing than no nothing's ever been, there's nothing to this story. We believe that the Trump campaign colluded with the Russians to win the election. And, and, and on top of that, since we don't have any evidence to that effect, uh, and the CIA director, John Brennan, former CIA director, uh, mention the fact that there was no smoking gun, that there's no evidence whatsoever. Although, 
although they don't have the right to prosecute U.S. citizens, because they are the Central Intelligence Agency, when they come across an issue or concern that they believe is prosecutorial, then certainly they will shift that information over to the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Department of Justice, and they will look into the matter and determine if there is any possible, any possible contaminant of law. One that a grand jury would come back and say is indictable. You see, you're not getting that in terms of, of a truth factor. What you're getting is a lot of speculation, a lot of innuendo, and a lot of people who sincerely, wholeheartedly, want to destroy America. But they don't they don't want Donald Trump in office to be because he's he's not what they wanted. You see, Hillary Rodham Clinton was what they wanted. Claudia Cheek writes, hatred of America and contempt for West is the religion of the left. For nearly half a century that hatred has been the unwavering theme of the progressive movement. See, this is why I love my chat room and I love the people in it. Y'all are the most brilliant folk in the world. This hatred has been the unwavering theme of the progressive movement in our universities, in our streets, and in the Democratic Party. Its practical agendas and the destruction of the culture of individual liberty and accountability at home and America's retreat abroad. This is what Republicans and all Americans, black and white, should be concerned about and what they should be joining forces to defeat. Hatred of America and contempt for its guardians among the police and the military is the social gospel of the left. For nearly half a century, this hatred has been the unwavering theme of the progressive movement in our universities, in our streets, and in the Democrat Party. Its practical agendas are the destruction of the culture of individual liberty and accountability at home and America's retreat abroad. This is what Republicans and all Americans, black and white, should be concerned about and what they should be joining forces to defeat. Can I say amen? Yes, I will, Claudia. You knocked it out of the park right there. You are absolutely right. David Horowitz wrote that, apparently. Thank you so much. This is what we're up against, America. We're... This is not sublimely merely a witch hunt. This is, and I, and I detest the rhinos like John McCain and Lindsey Graham who are volleyhooing and pushing this particular movement on because it benefits them politically. They, they, they have a great deign for Donald Trump. And, and listen, I'm not sitting here trying to be a rah-rah person, but I'm sitting here saying that the same people that would give an award to Trayvon Martin or a college degree in astrophysics to Trayvon Martin are the same ones who think that it is illegitimate and wrong that Donald Trump won a fair election. These are the same ones who would spend tens of thousands of dollars to get a piece of paper to put up on the wall that says that they took over 120 credit hours and passed them all and will walk out of a commencement speech given by the vice president of the United States. These are the same people that believe that it is far better for 45 million Americans to be on the food stamp program than for 36 million of them to find a job. These are those same people. These are the same people who have been religiously trying to tear down our nation day after day after day. And who helps them the most? It is the press. And I, I will, with great contention, I will say it and take it for the grain of salt that it be delivered this way. It is the press on both sides. I am not going to put together a network that's going to favor an individual. A network has to seek out truth. 
as you all know, when, when I was covering the Trayvon Martin thing, I was one of the first people to come out and tell you all uh, that this was self-defense. And Mary Brock will tell you how much the rest people left. I'll never come back and listen to your show again. And, and that was okay. But the truth of the matter is, it was self-defense. But those who were on the left did not worry about self-defense. They only worried about the color of one's skin. And they weren't really worried about his racial integrity. They were worried about creating a narrative in which America is always seen as the imperialist dictatorial body that's trying to colonize the world and destroy us all. And the simple fact of the matter is, a street punk decided to act illicitly against a community watch person. And given the opportunity in that moment of life and death, the community person was able to choose life. We have been watching these pariah attempt since even before the Republican primary ended to destroy the man who won the presidency. Now, I want you to understand, I am a, I was, I'm not a Cruz bot, but I was going with Ted Cruz. And when Ted Cruz lost Indiana, all of that moved away. The important thing was to focus on making certain that Donald Trump became president of the United States. Donald Trump has made promises and he's been trying to keep each and every one of those. Some of those promises are the antagonism of those on the left. Those on the left who open borders in Europe, creating a colossal invasion by the Moors, something that hasn't happened in over 400 years has rehappened. And now the Muslims seek to destroy and conquer Europe. Now, don't take my word for it. Take the words of the president of Turkey, Erdogan, whose, whose boys who were protecting him got out of the car to beat up on protesters in front of the Turkish embassy in Washington, D.C. Now, you got to know. These people have no respect for the law, no matter what country they're in. Rising tensions in Germany and in Sweden and in even Russia, when you look at Chechnya and some of the other nations that are there along the Middle Eastern borders. Each of us recognize that the ideology of totalitarianism has only one purpose, and that purpose is to destroy. It is not to coexist. And this is why I have a problem with the press on the right. Now, I know the press on the left. I, I know them. I know their job. Their job is to destroy the republic by any means necessary. With the kufi hat and the shiki on and everything else. You know what I'm saying? By, by any means necessary, what we're going to spend our time on is not the eight-year-old girl who died in Manchester because of a totalitarian ideologue. No, we, we're going to focus on hearsay and gossip afforded as law. But here's my problem with the press on the right. The press on the right adds fire to the flame, if there's such a thing as that. They have been trained 
to be weak. I know what I'm saying to you is going to be very offensive, and, and I'll take the repercussions accordingly. Those on the right who cover these stories have been trained to submit. What is the requirement of, quote-unquote, Islam, Mohammedism? Submission. What is the requirement of the LGBTQ, RST, UVW, XYZ community? Submission. What is the requirement of the KKK? Submission. What is the requirement of the Democrat Party? Submission. And we submit to their propaganda, to their yellow journalism, to their gotcha politics, and we say there has got to be fire somewhere because they say there's smoke. I see a clear day. I see an absolutely clear day. There is no smoke whatsoever. There's no clouds in the sky. The sun's beaming. But somebody over on that side said they saw smoke. Now, mind you, they are weeders. They don't mind with Mm, okay, but they saw smoke, and because they saw smoke with this imaginary tail that the President of the United States hooked up with Vladimir Putin and caused 65 million Americans to decide, hey, I think I'll vote for Donald Trump this time. Okay, I, I'm supposed to reason this together. And that there are actual politicians who say there's some there there. And then you get these guys who come on and they tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that it's not the crime, it's the cover-up. I want you to understand that there is no crime on collusion on the electoral race. Um, this is the same propaganda that supported President Obama sending tens of millions of dollars to Israel to try to make Bibi Netanyahu lose. These are the same guys that supported Barack Obama tying State Department funds and aid funds to East Africa as long as they changed their constitution to include abortion. You see, it was nothing wrong with his collusion on those matters. There was nothing wrong with his coercion on those matters. The problem comes when someone who falls into a van, who double pumps her head because she can't handle everything that's going on in her life, when this little goddess who was born to be made president of the United States loses, we got to justify every means necessary to support her winning. And that means if we have to take out Donald Trump, we will. And then you have Ebony Williams trying to say today that there may be some there there. Although there's no there there, there may be some there there. Let me explain something to you all. There is no crime for not committing a crime. We'll be back with more of the best in urban conservative talk right after these messages. You're listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We are certainly not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, and we promise we're going to spread it all over the world.
6339 Allentown Road, Temple Hills, Maryland, baby. That's a place to go this weekend, this week. Have a way you wish to do it. Do it, do it, do it well. Most certainly, 6339 Allentown Road, Temple Hills, Maryland, Infused Restaurant. Get the double burp. I'm telling you, big as my head. I love it. We'll be right back. From the war front to the streets of our nation's capital, men of faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show, 9.05 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. It's a new day on New Day, Black and Red. With home values up and interest rates near all-time lows, you probably know that now is a great time to refinance. Like the Johnsons, who save $436 a month. $436 a month? It's simple. Just go to LendingTree.com, compare loan offers for free, and see how much you could save in just five minutes. I thought you said the bank gave you the best rate. Yeah. Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. I have to do everything myself. Someone is sleeping on the couch tonight. From day's first light till night's last glimmer, your satisfaction is our responsibility. On the range or in the field of duty, you can rely on Brownell's lifetime guaranteed gun parts, tools, and supplies anytime, any place. It's how we've done business since 1939. Brown Hills. Money Talk with Melanie is a lively discussion of global, domestic, and kitchen table financial topics. Join your business diva, Melanie Collette, as I speak with respected entrepreneurs, CEOs, authors, and politicians as we explore today's fiscal environment. Money Talk with Melanie airs every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10.05 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Remember, this is important because it's your money. Talk with Melanie. Hey, it's Jersey Joe from the Reaver Common Sense. You can catch me every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com. It's every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shrmedia.com. Yes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am enjoying that song. Yes, I am. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I got a lot of stuff happening uh, at the Exceptional Conservative Network. You all know that on July 2nd, uh, we will be declaring our independence and we will... Hey, Dave. Dave Milner's in the chat roll this particular evening. What's up, Dave? Glad to have you here, bro. We will be declaring our independence and going... Uh, to, uh, what is that, uh, in it, live, and move on up today, 
TV. We will be going on internet TV uh, for all of the world. Uh, and we are ever so thankful of that. Uh, in fact, earlier today, uh, and let me just get that up. Uh, we, we put together the final first tier group uh, that will be going over. Maybe there'll be others that will join us. If not, you know, life is good. You still go on. Uh, <laughs> um, and in fact, uh, who will be joining us? Well, um, in July, uh, July the 2nd, in fact, the Sunday, July 2nd, we'll kick off uh, our live TV. Um, the exceptional one, of course, I'm going over, Ken McGlinton. And Lacey Steigerwall, who will be starting her show next week, will be going over with us. Uh, and Randy and April Perm, who will be starting their show next week, will also be going on. Leslie Ann Stoffel will be on our free channel so that you'll be able to see her stuff. And Shannon and Michael Wright will also be joining us on the premium channel. Uh, that channel will be growing. I can guarantee you that um, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, also, um, Talitha Mac Eachin will be joining us. Hopefully next week we will get her show going. And of course, you all are listening to Ron Edwards and the Ron Edwards Experience. He's on Fridays. Uh, of course... Uh, from now on, uh, on SHR, the uh, the great Ralph J. Chittam Sr. will be coming on at 8.05 p.m. Eastern Time. And so I hope that you sit back and enjoy and listen to him. Uh, Ken, though sad for the victims of the Manchester attack and sadder for the victims of the Demi-UK government. You're absolutely right, Dave. You're absolutely right. But we we talked about that early on, and, and it's one of those things where you just you're either going to just talk yourself out and you go to sleep, uh, or you do something about it. And quite frankly, I don't see anyone in Europe trying to do anything about it. That's just about about where I see it at this point. Uh, and uh, we were joking last night, VZ and I, and of course you all stay tuned on shrmedia.com uh, and listen to. Uh, the Bloviating Zeppelin show. He'll be on at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, but uh, in, in the sense that there are those who are in France and in England and in Germany who know that this is going on. And one of the most defeatist matters is that there was no one there who could stop it. No one who could defend themselves if it was any other means or measure. And as much as we have put into NATO and other institutions over there so that Europe could recover and then they wouldn't have to spend so much on protecting themselves, we could do that for them. Um, the unfortunate thing is that you have people who have bought into this authoritarianism and that our safety comes when we are tolerant of those who wish to not coexist with us. Um, and it's really frightful. Uh, it, I, I mean, you could spend the whole night talking about that, but really, the, the bottom line is that there are those who have basically given up their country. We talk all the time about Israel giving up its land, but how much land has Europe given up to authoritarianism? Crimea? Now, is that land? Apparently, we're about to lose Turkey. Is that not land because of the dictatorship of Erdogan? Uh, over there, or Erdogan, however way you wish to say it. Uh, are we looking at the Baltic states eventually going the way of Crimea uh, to Russia? Europe sees they have an open border policy to allow anyone who wishes to destroy uh, Western civilization. You're invited in. Come right on in. In fact, let's give you some food stamps and some currency so you can really work that group. So it's, it's, it's difficult 
for and, and for a lot of us who are uh, gun owners and on our own land and our properties and things of that nature, we we can't understand how someone would be willing to give up their freedom and their liberty so that they would coexist with a group of people that wish to annihilate them. Can we use can we start using terms like annihilation? Because that's really what the cult of Mohammedism is about. It's about annihilating the infidel who refuses to submit. What's the Democrat Party about? Annihilating the individual who refuses to submit. What's Marxism about? It's annihilating the individual who refuses to submit to the collective. Lest we are willing to maintain our freedom, God will not keep us free for the sake of being free. It is something that we have to fight for day and night. Day and night. Now, I, I got about four minutes before I go to a break, but I got to make this abundantly clear. Lately, I have been very offensive to people who have been very close to me uh, because I can see where we're going and I need to take us that way. I have enjoyed all of my time doing what I do. Without a shadow of a doubt, I would do it every single day. I wake up in the morning thinking about doing this. I go to bed at night doing this. I enjoy doing this. Because I remember growing up, there was not someone on the air in my neighborhood or my local station talking about these particular issues in the way that they needed to be discussed. I heard lots of liberal propaganda on the talk radio stations that I was growing up on. And I used to, it, it never logically made sense to me. So, doing this, I find great joy in because I get to talk about capitalism. I get to talk about constitutionalism. I get to talk about constitutional well, uh, conservatism and Christianity and individual sovereignty. I get to talk about things that I didn't hear about when I was a kid because there were people who were more concerned about us being a democracy than being a republic. Condoleezza Rice, I love you dearly, but you know what? We are a republic, not a democracy. And while the biggest flaw, Condoleezza, may be the fact that we had slavery, the biggest ointment then must be that we ended it. We seem so preoccupied with our wrongs that we can't even focus on what we've done right. But I want to say to you all that while I may have offended even the closest people to me at SHR Media and even on my own network, because I wish us to get off of the platforms that are been created to keep us at each other rather than actually reaching out, I am going to be very offensive and I'm going to do some things that people are not going to appreciate. I'm going to tell you that right now. A lot of people think that I'm doing things because I'm selfish and that I'm greedy. If I was so concerned about money, I would have given this up eight years ago. Can I get an amen, Mary? But if anybody's ever been put in Facebook jail, I want you to ask yourself, why do you want that? And why do you want that for your children? If we are the people that talk about being free, how can we how can we survive how can we thrive how can we accept 
being anything other than free. I am willing to lose all my friends. Cause somebody asked me once on Facebook, man, you leave Facebook, you're going to lose all your friends. Man, when I came out and publicly said that I was a conservative in urban America, I had lost all my friends. I, 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 will, I am ready to do everything I can to make certain that we create the infrastructure necessary so that we have a platform where our message gets out without the interests of the left. I want to be free. And if loving that is wrong, I don't want to be right. We'll be back. Meet Jason. He was really excited to start growing his business with social media until he realized how complex and time-consuming social media can be. It's difficult to manage multiple social networks and accounts. It's hard to monitor what's happening on social media, follow discussions, and engage with new followers. It's time-consuming to publish updates throughout the day, track and analyze how effective posts are, respond to fans and followers in a timely manner, and gain new customers. The list seems to go on and on. Jason quickly becomes discouraged. How could he ever do all of this and still run a business? He was ready to give up on social media until he found eClincher, the easiest way to manage social media. Jason was amazed how straightforward and simple it is to use eClincher. With eClincher, Jason is now able to leverage the power of social media without having to dedicate several hours a day. He can easily organize all his social media accounts in one place, efficiently plan and schedule his posts ahead of time, engage with his followers, understand the effectiveness of his efforts with powerful analytics, find new customers, and much more. In order to tell your business's story, simplify the process of managing your social media, and analyze results, sign up with eClincher today. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation, first to the Republican, then the Socialist. So glad to be here and so glad to have Mary as my bouncer. Claudia Cheek is in the chat room. And of course, my good friend Dave No Surrender Milner is here tonight. Uh, I want to talk with you all in the second half of our program about the budget. I don't want to give anything away, but uh, I I am profusely upset about one particular thing. <laughs> it ain't the Appalachian Jobs Program, okay? Just no, that's not it. That's not it. Um, but I have a very tough time with the government telling businesses about paid leave. I really do. That's none of your business. But we'll talk about all that and so much more in the second half. Coming up, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to thank the good people of Red Nation Rising. For having listened to us, also SHR Media for carrying us live, uh, HP Pundit for carrying us live as well, Ustream and Livestream for carrying us live. But when we come back in the second half, we started off uh, with my very, very good friend and daughter uh, in spirit, uh, of course, Janice Hall, the J Hall World Report will be right up. We will be right back with more of the best right after these messages. We'll start it off with, of course, Ron Edwards. Remember when the wealthiest counties in America usually voted Republican, while middle and lower income voters almost exclusively voted Democrat? Hello, I'm Ron Edwards. On today's page from the Edwards Notebook, there seems to be a seismic change in voting patterns. More lower and middle income Americans are waking from their multi-decade automatic support for globalist socialist Democrats and are shifting their focus toward Republicans, while increasingly more and more wealthy Americans support Democrats who are no friend of prosperity for the masses, unless it entails taking from the achievers to hand out to the idle. In fact, loony tunes like Senator Elizabeth Warren are against lowering the corporate tax rate. Of course, she and her fellow elites are wealthy enough to live comfortably with high taxes. But the world's highest corporate tax rate has caused over 50 U.S. corporations to move their headquarters and operations to lower tax nations like Ireland and Mexico. As a result, fewer jobs have been available and it is more difficult for Americans to raise themselves up by their own bootstraps by opening their own businesses. 
because of high taxes and over regulations. Now that should be one of the main rallying points for Republicans, instead of them being scared little chickens, afraid to support President Donald Trump's mission to make America great again. I'm Ron Edwards. Sponsored by the Tri-County Liberty Coalition. Hi, my name is Willie Lawson of the Willie Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. They told me that I needed to be humble but I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I decided to be awesome instead. That's the Willie Lawson Show, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Power brokers use corrupt politicians, deceptive Islam, and lies from establishment media to turn the once shining city on a hill into the city of the blind. What do the elites fear? One man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me at SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, Spreaker, iTunes, and YouTube for a different kind of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. You're listening to the most influential urban conservative talk show in all of the world. Christianity, conservatism, the Constitution, capitalism, we talk about it all right here on the Exceptional Conservative Show at theexceptionalconservativeshow.com. Go there now and join me in chat. We're spreading the good news to the ends of the earth. We'll be back right after these messages. I'm Ken McClinton, chairman of the Exceptional Conservative Network. Never has the cry for economic liberty been more resounding in urban America than on Election Day 2016. It's the economy! All real change begins with the American entrepreneur. Socialism did not work. Progressivism stole the wealth of individuals and families. You voted for something different. Real change. But what does real change look and sound like? It looks like Las Vegas, and it sounds like Freedom Fest 10. Freedom Fest, the world's largest gathering of free minds, is a popular liberty-minded conference at the beautiful Paris Resort in Las Vegas from July 19th to the 22nd. Hear the voices of the urban freedom movement. Deneen Borelli, Larry Elder, Gina Lofton, Helen Rowley, Juan Pablo Aglande, and Zayad Abdelnuha. Share ideas with powerful liberty movement figures like Steve Ford, Jim Rogers, Anthony Scaramucci, Jennifer Grossman, Naomi Brockwell, Denise D'Souza, John Stossel, Lisa Kennedy, Peter Schiff, and our keynote speaker this year, William Shatner. Your money, your liberty, your freedom, your city. Come for the real and return with the change. Register now at freedomfest.com for $100 off the regular registration rate when you use the all caps code T-E-C-N. We'll see you there. Hello, this is Leslie Ann Stokely with The Real Clear Israel. Join me every Sunday morning at 10.05 Eastern Time on the Exceptional Conservative Network, where we'll be discussing Israel with guests from Israel and around the world. That's the Real Clear Israel, 10.05, Sunday, on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you back to the second half of the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. I'm sorry we couldn't get Bob Worchick on our program. I'll talk with CJ about that. Maybe we'll get him on sometime next week. Um, but tomorrow night, Alicia Poe and Liz Crokin, who are writers, uh, it'll all be good. 
just listen to the Sharia compliant bobbleheads and you'll know. I <laughs> think you think. Tomorrow night, Alicia Poe uh, and Liz Crokin, uh, they are writers for World News Daily, WND.com. They broke a big story today regarding Seth Rich. They will both be on my program tomorrow night. We will be talking with them. And they have also another story about Seth Rich that they're about to break tomorrow. Uh, this thing is getting hot, ladies and gentlemen. And I do mean hot. When you figure out that the uh, police and the Federal Bureau of Investigation did not look at the laptop, according to reports uh, that the police did not interview uh, the bar keep at the bar in which he left before he was shot. Uh, when you denote the fact that for me, um, former Metropolitan Police Detective Rod Wheeler is busting stuff up all over um, the um, Fox News, which is probably why Hannity will be leaving soon. Just saying. Um, and then what conservative network will you have? Uh, but we got Tucker Carlson. Um, anyway, uh, but the bottom line is that your commercials are way too loud. I am so sorry, Mary. I'll, I'll try to keep them down from now on. I will. Um, but the bottom line is that we are looking at something that's moving from conspiracy to cover up. Uh, and uh, I'm concerned. I am concerned that maybe not because my daughter is an unresolved homicide in the District of Columbia. I would want to make certain that um, due care was given to her investigation to the fullest, and I'm not saying that it hasn't. I really appreciate um, the work of Detective Chanel Howard and the rest of the detectives regarding the case of Shanice Mil uh, Milton. Um, I hope someday that we will have the opportunity to arrest the individuals, the 16 persons that were involved in her murder. I pray so someday. And this weekend they have a special event in Anacostia celebrating Shanice Milton, or at least the building of the Shanice Milton bookstore. My wife and I will attend that. Uh, it will be at We Act Radio from 3 to 7 this Saturday, and Sugar Bear and EU will be performing there uh, at no cost. So uh, congratulations, you had to buy a ticket to go see them. It's going to be absolutely excellent. Um, but with all of that going on in our culture and our society uh, today uh, we are endowed with the responsibility of bringing about truth and that truth uh, requires us uh, to make certain that if there are fault faulties faults and if there are frailties if there are things that haven't been done and should be done that we seek justice now i'm not going out there and telling you right now that hillary rodham clinton put a hit job on seth rich i, I didn't say that i ain't going to say it to you in that particular fashion i know that that's been the accusation but there are just some things that have happened in this case that are just not lining up and quite frankly the American people need to know that an investigation has been done prudently. I, I, my daughter's eyeglasses, I just want to tell you how, I, and, and this might be the difference. My daughter's eyeglasses and computer and everything else that was in her bag at the time that she was killed is still under watch by the police. All that stuff as part of the investigation has been kept together. Uh, so I, I just, I, I can't, her eyeglasses 
are part of the case, and they have her eyeglasses. We haven't gotten them back. We haven't got her personal effects back. They are part of the case. So I, I can't imagine, and and all of my, I can't imagine someone not going to the bar that that person was at and not asking questions. You know what I'm saying? So tomorrow night, um, Miss Alicia Poe and Liz Crokin will be here. We will talk about the case. I'm not Fox News, so I'm not worried about being kicked off. But I, I, there are just some things that just don't add up. Uh, Dave says it's time for them to catalog that property and return it to you, Ken. They don't need it for the case. That's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying then, Dave? If they have all that stuff still for the case, okay? How come y'all didn't get the computer for Seth Rich? You know what? I'm, I, oh my goodness, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Before I, go, uh, I don't want to get it. I don't want to get ballistic. I don't want to get ballistic here. I, I just want to do a show. I just, <laughs> I just want it. Ah, uh, Dave, I love you, bro. Love you, bro. You know what I'm talking about. We're going to contact Janice Hall now, the J. Hall World Report. Let's get that young lady on the air, and let's talk about some of the conditions of the world, and let's not talk about Manchester, because it is what it is in Great Britain. You can't carry a gun. Hello. Hello, Janice. We love you. Glad to have you with us tonight. Glad to be here. Awesome. Uh, Janice, don't really want to talk too much about Manchester. Great Britain is what it is, right? Unfortunately... Yes, I mean, it was obviously the big news of last night, but I don't honestly have very much to say about this. Um, it's, uh, yes, yeah. it happened. It will continue to happen. Thank you. <laughs> terrorist attack should not be a surprise. But if I, listen, uh, you are the most honest commentator I've heard in the past, what, uh, 24 hours. This is to be expected. If you don't fight, they won't stop. No. Basically. I, mean, I, I would ask people what ever gave them the impression that terrorists wouldn't go after a teeny bopper <laughs> concert. <laughs> but our kid, I can't think of anything. I, 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 what do you say? I mean, what do you really say at this point when when you when your government doesn't allow you to protect yourself with a gun or or any other thing, uh, and literally your security is weak? you what, what what do you say? Well, I, it's, it's not just simply a matter of security, okay. Security exists, mm -hmm. but it's not everything that keeps a country safe. Yeah. And we accept risks in life. Mm -hmm. That is just part of living. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what the security is, there is a way around it. No mm -hmm. system is perfect. Mm -hmm. And Whatever system, whatever security the West develops, uh, terrorists will find a way to stay around that. Mm -hmm. Or will find another way to harm people. Mm -hmm. So, so are, are we at the point where we just have to say that this is the new normal then? That, that we should expect terrorism or terrorist acts uh, almost every day? Uh, that that dream that Arafat had uh, in the 80s that someday he would bring the war to America and every day there would be a terrorist attack. Uh, it, it's finally, it's come home to roost. Is, is that where we are? A little bit, yes. I think that, I know, I think it was, uh, sorry, today. I could be incorrect on this, but mm -hmm. I saw just a fleeting headline of the you know, this shouldn't be normal. Mm -hmm. Well, it is. It is normal. It is happening. It's going to continue to happen. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing 
really being done to solve the, the problem. I mean, yes, you can add more security, but as I mentioned, that is just simply, uh, it, it's like putting, <laughs> it's like putting makeup on a blemish, right? It's yeah. still there, you're just pretending it isn't. Exactly. Um, the, we, we have a scenario in a situation where there are those who portend um, that uh, they did a very good job last night of protecting uh, the individuals uh, at that concert. And the truth of the matter is uh, that, by golly, they didn't. I just, they didn't. And so uh, you're, you're stuck with a scenario that if you don't go in and drive out the people who are causing this, then you're going to have this every single day. Listen, when we come back from the break, uh, I want to talk with you uh, about Donald Trump's trip. Uh, and I, I suppose now he um, he's meeting or will eventually be meeting very soon with the Pope, uh, the potentate uh, of the Holy See or of uh, that little palatial 100 acre spot in the middle of Rome. Uh, that's his own country. Uh, and and I want to talk with you about a few other things. We're talking tonight with Janice Hall, the J. Hall World Report. We'll be right back with more of the best right after these messages. I'm Ken McClinton. Chairman of the Exceptional Conservative Network. Never has the cry for economic liberty been more resounding in urban America than on Election Day 2016. It's the economy. All real change begins with the American entrepreneur. Socialism did not work. Progressivism stole the wealth of individuals and families. You voted for something different. Real change. But what does real change look and sound like? It looks like Las Vegas. And it sounds like Freedom Fest 10. Freedom Fest, the world's largest gathering of free minds, is the popular liberty-minded conference at the beautiful Paris Resort in Las Vegas from July 19th to the 22nd. Hear the voices of the urban freedom movement. Janine Varelli, Larry Elder, Gina Lofton, Helen Riley, Juan Pablo Andrande, and Ziad Abdel Nuwan. Share ideas with powerful liberty movement figures like Steve Forbes, Jim Rogers, Anthony Scaramucci, Jennifer Grossman, Naomi Brockwell, Dinesh D'Souza, John Stossel, Lisa Kennedy, Peter Schiff, and our keynote speaker this year, William Shatner. Your money, your liberty, your freedom, your city. Come for the real and return with the change. Register now at freedomfest.com. That's freedomfest.com for $100 off the regular registration rate when you use the all caps code T E C N. God bless you. We'll see you there. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a rumor that the Blue Rating Zeppelin will be on tonight on shrmedia.com at uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. We will check that out because that's the kind of truth seeker we are. We will go to shrmedia.com at 11 p.m. Eastern Time and we will discern if the Blue Rating Zeppelin, Sir Mark, uh, is on the air. Uh, the show that we have been told, rumored, gossiped, uh, sent out from the intelligence committees on the House and Senate uh, is a berserk bobcat saloon. So that's what we've heard. We will investigate and we will get back with you. But you can come with us at 11 p.m. Eastern Time and listen. We are with Janice Hall, the J. Hall World Report tonight. Uh, Janice, uh, in a few hours, the President of the United States will be meeting with uh, the Pope. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> isn't, isn't that exciting? Oh, wow. It is exciting. I can't be the only one who's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> now, you and I both know that they got they went back and forth with each other during the election. A little bit. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, a little friction. Uh, the Pope virtually telling him that he's a pagan and uh, not a Christian. Uh, and uh, the Trump telling him that he's a little disturbed by not understanding the world uh, in, in tweets. Uh, and, and they went back and forth with each other. One of them ended up becoming president of the United States. So what do you expect is going to happen when they meet each other tomorrow, especially uh, on 24 hours? Well, it'll be about 36 hours by the time they meet uh, since Manchester. Yeah. Well, I will say that, yes, one of them became president and the other is still the Pope. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think they are, they have very different personalities and I don't, I don't think anything crazy is actually going to happen. It could be a very interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I will be interested to see kind of what comes out of not only Trump's office, but the, the Pope's as well, and how they say the meeting went. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they might be able to have some common ground, but I also think that there will be some very strong difference of opinions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I can imagine. I can imagine that there would be um, some concerns uh, between the two. One is uh, definitely believe that you're not going to get into heaven because you closed your borders. Uh, the other one's talking about drive them out, drive them out wherever they are uh, to the end of eternity. Get rid of them. Um, sensibly, uh, will they ever have a middle ground between the two, or, or are we just looking at people who are just poster childs of each side of the fence? Uh, I don't think they'll probably have too much of a middle ground. But I would also, I guess, like to point out that the Pope and the President of the U.S. are two very different job descriptions, and I don't think that either one would necessarily be well suited for the job of the other. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think that, um, I mean, I think that, that Trump is definitely better served to be the president of the U.S. than a Pope. And I think the other way too, I think that uh, the Pope would likely not make a very good U.S. president. So um, I think that they will have different opinions. I think that that's probably okay. Uh, I think that they are, they are powerful in, their, in each in their own realm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, that's hope that they can be amenable to each other. Uh, and I believe that they will be. Um, I think they will be. Yeah, they'll, they'll be all right. It's uh, unfortunate they'll walk away from each other and they will not be in agreement on a lot of things. Um, no. But I hope that they're in agreement that there has to be something done about terrorism. Uh, that, that's my, my real hope. Well, we'll probably agree that something should be done about terrorism, though they may have very different opinions on what that is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, one, one says keep the borders open, the other one says uh, we got to dry them out. It's, it's, it, yeah, it, it might be a little problematic there. Uh, I wanted to ask you regarding uh, Duarte. Uh, Duarte, who's in the Philippines, who has taken uh, law enforcement to the highest level that it possibly can be. Uh, he's in the process of declaring martial law uh, uh, because of a uh, a 
breakout uh, or rebellion per se uh, in the Philippines. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, he's received a lot of attention uh, because of his angst towards the U.S. Uh, recently regarding uh, the, uh, the invasion, per se, of the U.S. on, on the Philippines grounds. I, I want to ask you, uh, how is Duarte going and um, is it looking any better in the Philippines? Well, no country, no leader just has one problem. <laughs> uh, leaders have multiple problems. Yeah. And uh, for uh, Duarte, the U.S. Is, is one of them, but he also has other problems. And one of those is his own little version of ISIS. Mm -hmm. And it's it, Islam is essentially working its way into Asia as well. And when specifically what happened in this case, the martial law was declared, mm -hmm. was that the Philippines, the, the authorities had wanted to um, ar arrest um, a, a guy that they thought was, you know, essentially involved in uh, extremism and terrorist activities. So when they went to do that, however, they were met with some pretty significant resistance, uh, uh, about 100 guys, actually, which is a pretty good, pretty good group. Mm -hmm. And so martial law was declared in the region. It doesn't really seem like anybody quite has the upper hand mm -hmm. in, in the location. Uh, I imagine that Duarte will probably eventually bring things under control, but they essentially having a, a little tiny skirmish in the south of the Philippines right now. Is, is this is this getting bigger? Per se? You, you know what? Is this just isolated and just a few people are pissed off with the guy and saying, hey, you know, we, we want another leader or is this significant in the sense that this might be the first of many uh, rebellions that are taking place in the Philippines? Well, I think that this probably has more to do with Islam than it has to do with leadership in the Philippines. Ah. I think that re regardless of who the leader is, that this is going to happen. Um, as I said right at the beginning of this segment, Islam, mm -hmm. and especially you know, especially the, the extreme version of it, is making its way around the world. Mm -hmm. It's clearly spreading into Europe. It's you know taking over North Africa, the Middle East, um, all all the way you know through Pakistan and into India, as well as uh, Southeast Asia with the Philippines, mm -hmm. Indonesia, and, and other locations. And we have, the, the problems that the West is facing with terrorism and um, just groups that want to their own ca caliphate, yes. isn't just a Western problem. Mm -hmm. Just because there have been a lot of just because there has not been many things happening in Asia doesn't mean that they are not going to happen. They are going to happen. And we've seen some of the beginnings of that. We've seen Indonesia have terrorist attacks. We're seeing the Philippines having issues. Uh, China is also having problems mm -hmm. on their, their eastern border with Islamists. So, and that's not going to go away. It's only going to get bigger. Mm hmm. Exactly. Exactly. It, 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 well, now, is there room for Duarte uh, to say, you know what, Donald, I, I think we can, I, we, we can sit down together. We have something in common. We can work this thing through. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, 
maybe. He seems like the kind of guy who likes to solve problems on his own. Yes, doesn't he? <laughs> I, I think he was very good with a match uh, in his home. I probably, you know, took out the whole home like that. I want to ask you about Venezuela because um, still struggling. Uh, yep. But the protesters have moved from just throwing bottles. Now they're getting a little little more, um, uh, they're getting their comeuppance, uh, if I might say, the government. Uh, what's going on in Venezuela? All right. Well, so essentially it's continuing to do the same thing that it was doing last week, which is protests. Uh, people are being killed and injured. And the new, fad is probably the wrong word to use in this situation, but the new fad seems to be uh, removing and defacing Pedro Chavez's statues. Mm -hmm. And because it had been that Maduro was essentially the person that everybody hated, right? And that Chavez was, uh, it, it, he was a socialist, he, he did good things, and we still like him, even though his successor obviously is terrible. Mm -hmm. But that seems to be changing. And the memory of Hugo Chavez is now being attacked as well. Yep. Yep. So people are angry. They're angry. Yep. People mm -hmm. don't like the system that is in place currently. It, they don't like socialism and where it has put them. Exactly. Wherever socialism gone, has gone, uh, death and destruction have followed. Uh, I don't know why it's so difficult for people to get it, but <laughs> wow. Um, and once again, they are on the any moment now could be falling into the Atlantic Ocean type thing, uh, Venezuela. Uh, some coup may take place, but uh, congratulations, Venezuela. You all are struggling well. You all are holding, holding on to poverty like no one else's business. I um, want to ask you also about Uganda, uh, because uh, apparently uh, Europe has a problem with uh, refugees. Apparently Uganda has a problem with refugees too, right? Yeah, so uh, one of the areas that we don't talk a lot about um, is conflict in Africa, mm -hmm. and South Sudan has been just a disaster and so yes there have been hundreds of thousands of refugees who have left South Sudan and they have primarily gone to Uganda mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons being is you know right there and Uganda was very pretty much very happy to let them in mm -hmm. uh, however life isn't perfect yep and having almost 900,000 people come into your country wow. is going to be taxing. Wow. And you, you said 900, you didn't say 90,000 people. You said 900,000 people left the South Sudan to go into Uganda. That, that's a whole city. You know, <laughs> that's an entire city uh, into Uganda. Wow. What issues are they having? So, I mean, they're having pretty much all the issues that you would expect. They are having issues of food. They're having issues of unemployment. Um, they're having, you know, it's just issues with the indigenous population. Wow. Because, every, like, as we've discussed with Europe many, many times, uh, whenever you have a large influx of essentially others, it is going to cause some distress. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Uh, Uganda, good luck. Um, I would do everything I could to help, to help bring peace between North and South Sudan. <laughs> so they can go back home. I would do it very quickly. Uh, or at least close the border. I want to ask you a finality, uh, Sweden. Uh, we we pretty much have gone around Europe and Africa uh, and Latin America. 
uh, but we want to close out in Europe. Uh, apparently, um, well, I, I think people are tired of the refugees. Uh, you want to give us an update on what's going on in Sweden? Yeah, so I just came across this story uh, one day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's a little disgusting that I've not seen this story before now because mm -hmm. essentially, apparently in 2016, there were over 100 fires in refugee camps in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Most of them were arson. <laughs> oh, my. At least you think that it was only last year that was an issue. Mm -hmm. had, the trend has continued with fires being centered on refugee camps uh, in this year as well. And a couple weeks ago, they basically had uh, a free all at once. Mm -hmm. And of course, nobody wants to talk about this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because Sweden is clearly an open and welcoming and tolerant society. <laughs> yeah, of course yeah. it is. If they can just absorb all kinds of culture and and you know essentially be welcoming to everybody and everyone, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And there will be no problem. Mm -hmm. We just won't talk about any issues that might happen because then they might exist, and we can't have them exist. Wow. So the European, yeah, the European governments have really done a very poor job of protecting its own citizens, and now it looks like they can't even protect the refugees because the citizens, the citizens are tired of their daughters being raped at this point. Uh, they want these people going back home, uh, and it's 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 not a shock, although I don't approve of it. But it's not a shock to me uh, of the no. story of arsons. Uh, when you rape 150 girls in one night, uh, it, they it, get upset. yeah, they get kind of yeah, and especially when the halls of justice have completely closed off to them. Uh, they decide to take justice into their own hands. My gosh, uh, any any hope that that might change, or are we looking at that until these people go back home? Well, I will bring it back to the start of the show with Manchester. <laughs> Ta -da! Terrorism happens. It happens. Terrorism is going to happen. <laughs> um, a, a backlash against refugees mm -hmm. is going to happen. It's mm -hmm. going to continue to happen. Mm -hmm. This is the way the world works. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Well said. Well said. Janet Hall, the J-Hall World Report. We love you. We look forward to you coming back next Tuesday night. Love you too. Good night. God bless. Oh man, I, I love the way she put it. And we come back to Manchester. <laughs> if you're not going to protect your country, then people will protect themselves. It's just, it's just that way. Ladies and gentlemen, we are taking our last, our next to last commercial break for the evening. When we come back, uh, I had made note about four hours ago that we were going to have a special story tomorrow um, with uh, Alicia Poe and Liz Crokin. Uh, regarding Seth Rich. Well, the, Seth, the Washington Post has come out with an auditorial while we've been on the air from the Rich family, and I want to share that with you. We'll talk about the budget another day, uh, but I want to share that editorial with you uh, because they're trying to protect or, or at least defend the honor of their son. Uh, it's gotten very political, and they're telling us not to. We will be right back with more of the best right after these messages. You are listening to the Exceptional Conservative Network. For more information, go to www.theexceptionalconservativeshow.com. You are listening to the Exceptional Conservative Network. For more information, go to www.theexceptionalconservativeshow.com. Hi, my name is Chris Barlow. I'm the executive chef of the Food Restaurant. And today I'm walking through some of the meals that we prepare here.
339 Allentown Road, Temple Hills, Maryland. Make it your place this weekend. The most delicious food in America. Featuring outright thinking from a left brain and doing the job the American maggots want. BZ is fundamentally changing America one diaper at a time. Just when safety pin manufacturers are running out of metal for the diapers of the leftists, where the speech is free, but the drinks are not. The bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon can be heard every Tuesday and Thursday night, commencing at 11 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Pacific, where pushback is a requisite art form in and of itself. Let your obstacles be truly liberated when you listen to the bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon. Only on SHR Media Network. No ferrets were harmed in the making of this ad. Feature. Shekinah Ranch is involved in helping you through the snags along the pathway to adulthood. The last eight years have created greater challenges. Having a president to parade perversion to our youth has generated the need for us to ramp up our character learning 100-fold. Today's youth are confused. Our goal is to give them a fresh understanding of creation, moral clarity, respect for authority. In short, restore absolutes and boundaries. Boys are born boys and girls are born girls. God's design. Right is right even when no one else is doing it. The Exceptional Conservative Network is underway to raise $10,000 to help advance this mission. Together, let's reverse the confusion aimed at our youth. Don't be a spectator. Go to our donation portal and make your financial contribution, and do it now. Your gift goes towards helping youth get clarity, moral clarity. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you can easily do that by going to the front page of the exceptionalconservationshow.com, scrolling down and donating. Hit the blue button and donate. Do it today. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, uh, the controversy that is being um, pushed aside as I welcome you back to the Exceptional Conservative Show, live from the nation's capital uh, in Washington, D.C., is the ideal that politics can eventually get you killed. Uh, I've known uh, all of my life from all of my studies of history that politics is probably one of the leading uh, cause of death for most people. Uh, but when we get to the point where politics becomes associated with your son's death, it can be uh, quite uh, disappointing. You might think it's distasteful for people to bring up the opinion. Um, but some things were not adding up, and apparently people have gone to the point, Rod Wheeler being one of those, and tomorrow night we will have Alice uh, Alicia Poe, forgive me, and Liz Crokinorn from World News Daily on our program to talk about the Seth Rich murder from their side. This is the side that Seth Rich's family is giving us. They have come out this evening at 6.04 p.m. Right after I announced that we were going to have Alicia Poe and Liz Crokin on our show uh, tomorrow night. They have an editorial that's already out. It was put out at 6.04 p.m. And I just want to, I want to do this because a lot of people are going to say, hey, Ken, you're just making this stuff up. People don't, on the left, don't listen to your program. People, uh, uh, I know. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, they make it very poignantly clear that the writers are the parents of Seth Rich, who was killed in the district in 2016. They say, imagine living in a net nightmare that you can never wake up from. I can. I imagine that. Imagine having to face every single day knowing that your son was murdered. I face every single day knowing my daughter was murdered. I understand. Imagine you have no answers. Well, uh, there's been no answer for me. The case is unresolved at this point. That no one has been brought to justice and there are few clues leading to the killer or killers. Well, I, I'm in your same boat. You're on the same road I am. Imagine that every single day with every phone call you hope that it's the police calling to tell you that there has been a break in the case. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm with you. Imagine that instead every call that comes in is a reporter asking what you think of a series of lies or conspiracies about the death. That nightmare is what our family goes through every day. Now, I, here's, I, I don't, if you don't know the reason why, my daughter was killed as a human shield. 
between two gang members. I know the reason why. We have to believe that this is a bungle. Robert, okay. Imagine said that every call that comes in is a reporter asking you what asking what you think of a series of lies or conspiracies about the death. That nightmare is what our family goes through every day. Our beloved son, Seth Rich, was gunned down in the early hours of July 10, 2016, in his Washington, D.C. neighborhood of Bloomingdale. On the day he was murdered, Seth was excited about a new job he had been offered on Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Seth had dedicated his life to public service, and he told us that he wanted to work on the campaign's effort to expand voter participation because he loved our country dearly and believed deeply in the promise of democratic engagement. Seth had been walking around, calling friends, family, and his girlfriend, pondering the broader picture of what the job change would mean. He wondered how he would pick up and move to New York City for four months, the strain that might put on his relationships, and how it would all affect the life he had built for himself in Washington. The circumstances of what happened next are still unclear. We know that Seth was abruptly confronted on the street, that he had been on the phone and quickly ended the call. We also know that there were signs of a struggle, including a watch band torn when the assailants attempted to rip it off his wrist. Law enforcement officials told us that Seth's murder looked like a botched robbery attempt in which the assailants, after shooting our son, panicked immediately ran and abandoned Seth's personal belongings. We have not, we have seen no evidence by any person at any time that Seth's murder had any connection to his job at the Democratic National Committee or his life in politics. Anyone who claims to have such evidence is either concealing it from us or lying. So I, I want to put this in here for you at this point. I just want to put this in here for you all to know. What do you say, Dave? Even worse, these poor people are being manipulated by the Democrats to speak out on this painful issue. I, I would agree with you. But they're making a point here that anyone who claims to have such evidence is either concealing it from us or lying, meaning that they have not been advised of that evidence just yet, if there is such. And then they make this very poignantly clear as to who the enemy is. The enemy is not the one who murdered the son. The enemy happens to be the conservative news outlets. Like it unto mine. Still, conservative news outlets and commentators continue day after painful day to peddle discredited conspiracy theories that Seth was killed after having provided WikiLeaks with emails from the DNC. Those theories, which some reporters have since retracted, are baseless and they are unspeakably cruel. We know that Seth's personal email and his personal computer were both inspected by detectives early in the investigation and that the inspection revealed no evidence of any communications with anyone at WikiLeaks or anyone associated with WikiLeaks. Nor did that inspection reveal any evidence that Seth had leaked DNC emails to WikiLeaks or to anyone else. Indeed, those who have suggested that Seth's role as a data analyst at the DNC gave him access to a wide trove of emails are simply incorrect. Seth's job was to develop analytical models to encourage voters to turn out to vote. He didn't have access to DNC emails, Democratic concession, Congressional Campaign Committee emails, John Podesta's emails, or Hillary Clinton's emails. That simply wasn't his job. So by his job, he didn't have access to that information. Or is it by his job, he didn't have that information? So got to make certain you know these. Despite these facts, our family's nightmare persists. Seth's death has been turned into a political football. Every day we wake up to new headlines, new lies, new factual errors, new people approaching us to take advantage of us and Seth's legacy. It just won't stop. The amount of pain and anguish that this has caused us is unbearable. With every conspiratorial flare-up, we are forced to relive Seth's murder and a small piece of us dies as more of Seth's memory is torn away from us. 
to those who sincerely want to get to the bottom of Seth's murder, we don't hold this against you. We don't think you are monsters and we don't think you are terrible people. We know that so many people out there really do care, don't know what to think and are angry at the lack of answers. We also know that many people are angry at our government and want to see justice done in some way, somehow. We are asking you to please consider our feelings and words. There are people who are using our beloved self's memory and legacy for their own political goals, and they are using your outrage to perpetuate our nightmare. We ask those purveying falsehoods to give us peace and to give law enforcement the time and space to do the investigation they need to solve our son's murder. I understand your trials and your tribulations personally. But I also understand there will always be people out there whether you want them or not whether you like them or not whether you call them friend or foe that desire to know the truth if a conspiracy might lead to a truth all hail the conspiracy the truth of the matter is 16 people were involved in my daughter's death and we haven't found a single one of them. Many conspiracies. Many innuendos and gossip. But no satisfaction or justice. I was told that it's probably best to always keep your child in the news. That you can get closer and closer to who the killer is. I believe that. If a conspiracy might open the door to find out who the truth is and who the killer is, I say open the door. You've got nothing to lose because you've lost everything already. We'll be right back right after this message. It's a love story like no other from God's heart to yours. And for 30 years, it's been at the heart of every book, Bible, CD, gift, and resource from ChristianBook.com. Over 500,000 products, always at the very best value. ChristianBook.com, everything Christian, because it's our story too. From day's first light till night's last glimmer, your satisfaction is our responsibility. On the range or in the field of duty, you can rely on Brownell's lifetime guaranteed gun parts, tools, and supplies anytime, any place. It's how we've done business since 1939. Brownell's. Now, if Brownell's human by race, man, Christian by faith, American by nationality, conservative by choice. It's Reverend Ralph Chittums, the right guy, on the Exceptional Conservative Network from 4.05 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. The right guy on PECN. Begin your morning the right way with some right thinking from me, Perry Drake, your friendly neighborhood drive-by pundit. I want you to join me every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern and 9 a.m. Central Time on the Exceptional Conservative Network. From politics to pop culture to relationships to whatever else is on your mind, we have a great deal to talk about. Join in and let's get the talking started. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to do me a great favor. I want you to stay tuned to shrmedia.com, shrmedia.com because my very good friend, VZ, Sir Mark the Blue Angels Zeppelin, will be on in just a few. Probably will have some choice words uh, for that opinion, opine, that was released by the Rich family. Uh, all I can do is pray that there would be a case resolution, justice served. Uh, but tomorrow night, we still go through with our interview with Alicia Poe and Liz Conklin, uh, Crokin, forgive me, 
uh, World News Daily, and we will be talking about the Seth Rich murder. All I can say is God has blessed America. It's time for America to bless God. We will see you tomorrow night. Good night, and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.